Hi. <laughs> thank you very much, Javier, for a great introduction. And um, thank you very much to the IFRIC then and the public crew for putting on such a fantastic series of events. So um, this session is all about keeping it up. So I hope you're all ready for the end of the day. Um, I'm Anna Lewis. My startup is called Valobox. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about that to put what I'm saying in context. So we essentially make web-friendly books. And by this, I mean that we take ebooks and we deliver them through a browser. And the reason why we take ebooks, which traditionally might be files which are accessible from the web but not actually a part of it, and deliver them through a browser, is that we're really, really interested in a particular question. And that question is, how do you sell, to, how, how do you sell books to people who aren't looking for them? Because bookshops do a great job of selling books to people who want to buy books. But um, there are a lot of us, um, and if you're a student or if you're running a business or anything like that, who are looking for answers to problems or questions that we have every day, and we're searching for information, and we don't care whether it's in a book or wherever, a blog post. We just want it to be good and reliable. So by making books a part of the web, as Valobox does, uh, you have all these kinds of opportunities open to you. So each page on Valobox of every book is, um, a, has a unique URL, which um, can be crawled by search engines and linked to directly from anywhere. We've also um, been very mindful of the impatience of web users. And um, we know that people get very, very itchy on the web if they can't get to the exact piece of content in two seconds. So we've tried to remove as many barriers between people and the content that, that, that they're looking for. So you can preview pages from anywhere in the book. You can pay by the chapter rather than paying for the whole thing up front. Um, and we've also decided that we don't want to just be another ebook store. We want to give publishers the potential to create a million ebook stores. So anyone who accesses a Valobox book can then embed it in their own website, in their own blog, or link to it from Facebook or Twitter. And when they do that, they get 25% of any revenue that that share, sharing generates. So you're kind of really saying to people, well, you know, you take the books to where you think there's an audience, um, and we'll reward you for that. So I'm here to you to today to talk to you about my experience of working with publishers. And I want to start the story somewhere over 8,000 kilometers away, um, in San Francisco, in fact. Um, and in the early days of Valobox, we applied for something called Y Combinator. And you might have heard of it. It's a tech incubator project which is run out of San Francisco by a very well-known guy called um, Paul Graham. And what they do is they take startups, they uh, mentor them, they give them some money, uh, and in return, they get some equity in the company. And it's very, very competitive. So we were absolutely thrilled that we got through to the final interview round. And we arrived there, um, and we had the interview. Uh, it was very quick, and then he said, well, we're going to let you know by the end of the day. So we said, OK. And we did what any sensible person would do, and went out and drank loads of cocktails. <laughs> Um, and then I got back to the hotel room in the evening, and I saw I had an email. And you know that feeling that you get when you get that letter or that email, when you've applied for a job or something, and you're, you're really, really anticipating the, the answer, so you feel a bit sick and a bit excited. Um, and I opened it, and it said, I'm sorry to say, felt really sick, and the cocktails probably didn't help. But <laughs> it was such a shame. And, and the reason that they said was that we really like you, and we really like your product. But startups are good at doing things that big companies can't do. And one thing that large companies like Amazon and incumbents are good at is doing distribution deals with publishers. And we think that your growth rate is going to be constrained by the rate at which you can sign up deals with big publishers. So obviously, I was like, <laughs> what do you know about publishing? I'll show you. I really hate it when people are right about stuff like that, um, because it is really hard. And it's not impossible, but it is very hard when you're a small company dealing with larger companies, um, as, as many of you will probably have experienced. So 
How do you make the relationship work? So the first thing is all about laying the groundwork. I think making sure that you as a business are ready to work with startups. Be clear about what you're looking for. I think you just need to be in a place where you're like, yes, we're looking at the future and we're open to possibilities. There are a lot of publishers who I think are kind of interested in it, but not really saying, I'm investing in my future sales channels. So, so be clear that you're ready and you're looking for something new. Second of all, please tell me how you want me to work with you. Because every publisher is different. Um, and it's actually really hard as a startup to know, first of all, who to even approach. Because job titles <laughs> pretty much mean nothing. You may as well be called like the book wizard. Um, because I deal <laughs> with digital marketing directors, sales directors, digital product managers, like everything like that. So if you're engaging with startups, tell them who to go to first, tell them who to pitch to, and then you kind of won't end up getting, getting pitched by uh, people that you're not, you're not ready to listen to. Um, and the other thing is, you know, giving, it, giving me an idea of the kind of process I'm going to have to go through if I'm going to work with you is really helpful. And I know publishers are kind of feeling their way around through this too, but with, like with an author, when they come to you, they know, okay, my book's going to be going to a, an editor and I'll have help with that, and then the cover will, cover will be designed and then it'll come out in you know, a year, 18 months or whatever. It would be great to have some indication of what that process might look like if we're successful or how to get there. What are the stages? The, the third point, um, and I can't emphasize how important this is, is have well-managed files and metadata. Um, it's so much easier when the building blocks that you're working on when you're ready to innovate are solid. Um, because it's just, it stops so much backwards and forwards between you and the kind of metadata manager or whoever it is. Um, O'Reilly, for example, are brilliant at this. They're very easy to work with, and that's, I think, one of the reasons why they do work with a lot of startups, because they don't have to invest a lot of time in uploading files or distributing them here or there and, and managing their metadata. It's all just really straightforward. So those are the building blocks moving forward. And I've put a picture of a snowboarder here because uh, snowboarders think they're cool, and you know, as a startup, we think we're pretty cool. Although the reality is it's a lot of hard work and you just end up falling on your ass quite a lot. Um, <laughs> so getting the most out of the relationship as you move forward, I think I've put keep it lean. And I kind of, I really feel this one deeply because we had a big project with a publisher um, and it was very exciting, but it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then they were like, yes, and India, our office in India want to be involved in this and here and here. And suddenly, it just got completely out of control, and it all had to be shut down. Um, and it just felt like if we'd started small, then they could have seen what was working and then develop it. So try and do a small, meaningful trial, rather than trying to transform your business from the get-go. The second thing is taking advantage of skills and flexibility. Like the, the publishers who get the most out of us are the people who come to us with uh, an open mind and talk to us about what their problems are and what solutions that or, or what questions they have about their business because we've built a product but we're very flexible we can adapt it and if there's a problem that you're trying to solve and if we tweak our product a bit we can actually help you solve it then everybody's going to be much happier so go with an open mind about dealing with people as you know, smart people who can think beyond the confines of their product. Um, and the third one is let's innovate in small steps. And that's kind of a nice way of saying this. What I have learned <laughs> is that you have to try and make the new thing sound as unnew as possible. So I try and make it sound really boring, <laughs> um, as unadministrative as I can. And I think it's because if you can minimize that, that kind of feeling of uncertainty in the minds of publishers, um, or, or indeed like any kind of business where you've got quite a big legacy uh, business that you're, you feel comfortable with and everything kind of beyond that can be quite 
and certain is that you know you can you can meet it's much easier if you meet in the middle so for example delivering books on the web is i mean it would be great if people could just give us kind of html content at the beginning that's just kind of in the raw format but but they can't it's it's, it's unrealistic for us to to um, ask you for that. So we accept EPUB files from um, publishers and then we do the processing of that. Um, and likewise, when it comes to transferring the files, we have publishers give files to us via an FTP, which isn't really the most effective way of doing that either, but it's something that a lot of publishers are familiar with and it's kind of easy. So trying to make it feel less new than it is, I think um, really helps us and um, as publishers I think it can also kind of help you because it's one of those things where you uh, can sell it internally far more easily. I just realized I, I missed this one and I'm just going to mention this asking stupid questions um, because this is actually quite important. Um, if you if you don't understand when a startup is blathering on about to you about you know all of the buzzwords that they come out with, then do ask them because it it it's important for two reasons. And the first is that if they can explain it to you, then it means they understand it and they're probably pretty good. Um, if they can't, then maybe you should be questioning whether you want to do business with them. And the second thing is that again, selling it internally. If you're, if you're going to have to, if you like the project, project and you're going to have to sell it to your boss or someone else in the company, then you need to know it well. And asking lots of questions is a great way to do that. So, sorry. Um, so, yes, when it's not meant to be, um, as anyone who's been snowboarding might know, it's, it takes guts to stop yourself with your face. Um, and <laughs> but <laughs> um, sometimes it just isn't meant to be and I think this kind of is quite important um, this is from a, an American series called How I Met Your Mother very profound <laughs> literary reference um, you, re you know sometimes it's just not the right time for us to work together and that's fine I'd just rather you told me up front <laughs> um, be cruel to be kind uh, and I you know I got an email the other day from someone who I really wanted to work with but they said sorry it's just not right let's, let's chat in six months fine, I'll stop harassing you. Um, and sometimes it just won't work out, and I think that's okay. And, you know, failure is just an opportunity to learn more, and you will learn a lot, especially, especially if you really throw yourself into these experiments. Your staff will learn lots, and you'll have internal knowledge that will help you do better in the future. So um, keeping it up, just to say with Valobox, it hasn't all... Um, ended horribly, we're, we're doing really well, we've signed up a number of publishers um, and we've focused as well as working with um, bigger publishers who often take a bit longer to kind of go through all the legal um, systems and stuff. We've also focused on smaller publishers who are a bit more nimble uh, sometimes and they, they have uh, fewer kind of internal battles to fight when it comes to innovating. So we focused on those guys. And then I want to just end with the words of um, Joe Wykert. He's the chair of the O'Reilly Tools of Change conference. And I just, I just really loved him when he said this in his roundup of um, the Tools of Change conference. He said, have you hugged a startup today? Um, <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's great when we work together and I think there's so much potential and we'd really really like to help you grow your business and move forward um, and uh, let's do it okay thank you very much <laughs>